when I was younger, uh, we had for orientation mobility training. I didn't get any until I was in high school, starting in ninth grade. My mom and dad paid for that, some I would have, so I'd have it in the summers. Finally, in eleventh grade, uh, they hired a mobility instructor, so I had mobility the eleventh, the rest of eleventh grade and twelfth grade, and I had it three summers before that. And then well, during that time, I was I uh, started learning how to ride the bus. It came close to my area had laid down in Georgian Way down here and I would ride the bus and go places and the instructor taught me how to do that and cross streets. But besides that, like when I was younger, I just rode with mom and dad usually. Mm -hmm. And your brother, Timothy. And Timothy, yeah, when he learned to drive. Drive. So that's what I did. Before uh, he was having a terrible time because my husband or I would have to drive him or he would have to find a driver, you know, like a friend or whatever. People who have the service, it uh, has some uh, measure of uh, uh, they know that uh, they are able, when they need the service, that it will be available. So it's some insurance, yeah. psychologically, uh, even if they don't use it or use it infrequently, the fact that uh, they know that uh, it, uh, it is available and they have the opportunity when they wish. And it seems to me it's very close to being able to drive yourself. Uh, it uh, is, of course, on demand, but uh, the ability to go where you want to go very close to the time that you would like to go and return when you wish to return is is very close to having to being able to drive yourself and uh, at, particularly uh, from the elderly standpoint uh, you're not concerned of your abilities to drive and, and maybe the uh, decreased ability that you have particularly from the safety standpoint well, it has given our son Philip a life but ITN has just been, it's a bit of an answer to prayer. 